Hey, what's going on, everybody? Hopefully your Sunday's off to a lovely start. Uh, we're going to start talking DK as opposed to uh, Bellman just sitting around listening to me whine and cry about playing Alvin Kamara and Mike Evans in my fantasy championship. Uh, Wilson, nice win. I'm going to call it already. You got this one, buddy, so congratulations on the championship. But we're here to talk DK. <coughs> Excuse me. A lot of sports going right now with the NBA and NFL having you know games every single day of the week. So hopefully everybody is enjoying it and being profitable. Yeah, NBA was another uh, wild night last night. Man, I I know this is a football video, but I just got to say this. I am, like, kind of really hyped on the Cavs' young team right now. Like, I know we're not going to win anything. I get that. But Darius Garland looks like he's a player. Yeah, they uh, they got some ex explosivity. Speaking of Cleveland, though, we got cover boy uh, Austin Hooper that we're going to talk about today and another Cleveland Brown. You guys got thrown into an interesting predicament yesterday. Uh, f you know, and it's what's really rough for you guys. You're playing one of the hottest teams in the NFL, the New York Jets, on their longest winning streak of the year. Yeah, I mean, listen, the Browns should still take care of business here. It sucks the spot they're in, but thank God we are playing the Jets and is a must win. So it sucks, but Marvin Hall season, right? Yeah, no kidding, right? All right, guys, so... Overlay has got a QB shootout up this week that we're going to run through real briefly when we're all done with this. Again, if you've uh, been interested in playing on the site, go check out the matchup shop. And if you make that initial deposit, send me a screenshot of it so I can get you a free membership to the five pack. Speaking of five pack memberships, uh, we do have the NBA package that is up. Uh, I have not gotten the price changed yet if you're looking to take advantage of that. But the promotion for the day, all new monthly customers today get $10 back off their first month. And if you're a monthly customer, you get both NBA and NFL Subscribe to the station if you're new to it. So let's talk about the uh, quarterback position today. So there's a couple of quarterbacks we both like. Uh, I'm going to talk about Patrick Mahomes right now. And this is just kind of a keep it simple, stupid Occam's razor play for cash games. One, there is a buttload of value all over the place on this slate. Uh, you call it because of COVID, call it for whatever reasons you want. It's very easy to pay up in a variety of areas today. Uh, and Patrick Mahomes, by my last research, is good at football. I don't know if your research led you to the same conclusion, Bellman, but uh, I did heavy, heavy research. Turns out he's good. Uh, Atlanta's D has played better throughout the season, but I'm not scared of them. You know, he's trying to make the MVP push. Um, there's no Clyde Edwards Hilaire today, so I, I don't envision a game script where like they run the ball 30 times or anything like that. So if you have the money, uh, no reason to get up to Patrick Mahomes. And like I was looking at Jalen Hurts all week, and I like Jalen Hurts today. Uh, I have him starting in a fantasy championship that I'm going to lose. So uh, that shows how much I like him. But then I asked myself this kind of keep it simple, stupid question. One guy's an MVP and a Super Bowl champ, and the other guy has two career starts. Who do you trust more? Yeah, I mean, there's other guys I like a lot today, too. I like Deshaun Watson a lot, who I have starting in my league, who's definitely in play. But I'm with you, especially in cash games where you're, like, looking for the most optimal plays on paper, especially where ownership matters in the sense that it's better for your guys to be higher owned. He just makes too much sense here because he's so easy to fit. You can fit in a couple of his weapons that are pretty cheap. There's value plays all over the slate. A lot of the expensive players that we like to roster aren't on this slate. You know, you got yeah. Derek Henry tonight, Cook and Kamara on Friday, a bunch of guys yesterday, Diggs on Monday. That affects guys like Mahomes because it's just easier to pay up on your QB. So I don't think he's like a tournament lock, but he is the guy you plug into your optimal lineup. Any cast games, 100%. You know, you kind of I, – I missed that bullet point, but it's a good one that there's no – like you said, no Kamara, no Cook, no Diggs, no Hopkins. All these guys are not on this slate. And there's really only a couple of higher-priced guys that I even have interest in. So right. it just leads you to a spot that it's easy to pay up. Like Brad and I were messing around the cash lineup yesterday, and his tight end, Travis Kelsey, is you know a really, really good play. But then we came to the conclusion that like – it's so much easier to pay up at quarterback for the sure thing than it is at tight end because the difference between – Tight end's like 5K versus when you're just paying up in quarterback, it's like 1,000. You know what I mean? No doubt. No doubt. All right. Next up. So this is part one of Cleveland Browns talk that we want to discuss this morning. And when you had me uh, talk up some of these Brown guys in the write-up, I, uh, I don't know exactly what to say about them because I don't think we can really appropriately uh, guess what the Cleveland Browns are going to do today. I can see this thing working out in just the widest variety of ways. I can see your offense really faltering today. I can see them banding together and playing really, really well. I can see them going very run heavy. And, you know, we were bringing up the point that the Jets are pretty good against the run. However, the Browns are also a really good running football team. So that offensive line and those running backs can get all over them. Uh, they still have a few playmakers left on offense. And one of their better playmakers is Kareem Hunt. Is he going to be playing slot wide receiver today? 
I don't know. I don't really know what his role is today. I'm excited to watch it. The Packers play tonight, so I get to cruise around and watch these uh, noon games all over DirecTV and everything like that. This is a game I'm a little bit intrigued by, even though it does have the one-win Jets in it. I am really, really curious to see how the Browns run their offense today. And I could see Kareem Hunt with a bad day. I could see him with a great day. I don't know, but I want to watch this one. So when I was making the GPP video with Patriot, you know, a couple of hours before this news came out, I already was taking the stand that I didn't know exactly how this game was going to play out because we've seen it all year. Teams, even run heavy teams play New York and they just pass the whole time because New York's so bad against the Jets. However, like you just mentioned, the Browns are one of the best running teams in the league. The Jets are missing their two top defensive tackles. Not sure exactly what to expect here. And now you add in all the LeBron's receivers are out. So I'll say one thing that I know you'll, you'll agree with. Thank God they're playing the Jets here. If they were playing a good defense in this spot, I really wouldn't have much interest in any of these guys because I'm with you. We don't know how it's going to play out. And I'm not going to be surprised at all if the Jets defense plays well simply because the Browns offense doesn't play well. So it's kind of like that correlation right there. That being said, I still have faith in the Browns offense in this spot. We've talked about Kareem Hunt and Chubb all year. I think they're both firmly in play here. Chubb, however, is a couple thousand more than Hunt. And we know that Hunt is involved in the passing game. This is just a hunch, but I do think you see Hunt play some slot wide receiver today. I mentioned earlier kidding, you know, it's Marvin Hall season. He's their, he, arguably he's their number one receiver today. Not he's arguably, got, he is their number one receiver today. And this guy hasn't played a snap for the Browns. So that tells you all you need to know. Hunt knows the offense. They're going to get their playmakers the ball. And again, we don't know. It's no sure thing by any means, but I'm not going to be surprised at all if Tar Hunt has like 10 targets today. I, I wouldn't be surprised if the Jets win this game and the Browns score three points. I wouldn't I be surprised if Nick Chubb has 250 yards. I agree. I agree. In everything in the middle, I don't know, but I am super intrigued. I think they're going to get creative. And Hunt is a guy that you can move all around and get creative with. One thing I will say that gives me hope, because this is a point you made on our first video, Stefanski is a good coach. He is going to put his guys in a position to succeed. So that's what I have faith in. I don't know exactly how it's going to happen. But I kind of took that in when you said that, and I agree. Like, when you made the point earlier this week that this was a good time to keep Baker's confidence going, that maybe they continue to throw a little bit because Fancy no, knows what he's doing, I completely got on board with that. I was liking the Browns' passing game. You know, unfortunately, this came out last night. But I still think Stefanski will put them in good spots. I was, uh, I was doing the write-up for NFL customers, and I was writing on Baker Mayfield as my GPP play. And then I, because I hadn't, I'd been watching basketball for an hour or two. Right. I hadn't paid attention to NFL. And then, like, I reread your note. I'm like, all the Browns receivers. And I'm like, oh, I missed something, didn't I? And I pop open, uh, I already remember if it was Fantasy Labs or even ESPN or whatever it was. I'm like, oh, COVID got you all. I'm like, well, Baker Mayfield, delete, 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 delete. <laughs> I'm glad I just tossed that in there. I figured it might happen like that. All right, man. So you want to talk about uh, DJ, and I'll say one point because this is more of one of your GPP plays. Like Ben's cook, guys, he can't throw the ball downfield with any effectiveness, and Deontay Johnson runs a buttload of shallow patterns. So obviously I love the second bullet point because Ben is cooked, and obviously we'd rather have a guy whose quarterback wasn't cooked. However, to your, the point you just made, Deontay Johnson is one of the league leaders in targets. He's damn near 6K here. In a spot against the Colts team that while they have defensive playmakers, they've given up big plays and points every single week. I think this game is competitive. And I think you see Johnson with his normal, you know, around 10-ish targets that he gets every week. He's got a good chance to break one. This is one of my favorite plays on the slate. And it also goes back to what we talked about a couple minutes ago. There aren't, you know, a ton of high-priced studs we want to roster on this slate. No Kamara, Cook, Diggs, Hopkins, et cetera, et cetera. At this price point, man, he's one of my favorite plays point per dollar on the entire slate. I think he crushes value. And I'm not a cash game player, so I don't know if I would play him in cash. But if I were making one lineup today, I don't care what format it is. He's in it. All right. Uh, moving on down the list since I accidentally pressed the button. <laughs> um, we'll move to a next guy. This is another guy I know we both like. And this coming from a guy who is I'm really not a Melvin Gordon guy. I know he went to school in Wisconsin, and I watched the Badgers play, and he was really good in college. Uh, I haven't really been a Melvin Gordon guy the last couple of years, but I like him a lot today. And the biggest part of that is really, really just a very simple point. Philip Lindsay's done, man. He's on the IR. So that's not a thing right now. In a, in a timeshare where they ride the hot hand, it's always really, really a guess 
who's going to be the better player that day. Now, I used Gordon last week because he just happened to fit my last spot. So he was already on my good side. I'm not going to pretend like that doesn't affect my decision right here. But with no Philip Lindsay and Royce Freeman's questionable as well, I think Gordon is in a really, really good spot for 20-plus touches today. And I'll take a lot of running backs on my roster if they're in a spot for 20-plus touches today. And most importantly to me, these are two teams right here that on any given week, nobody knows who the hell they are. Uh, some weeks, the Chargers look like world beaters. Well, I'll say this. Some quarters, the Chargers look like world beaters, and then they're terrible the next one. Denver's had some moments, and then they're terrible. I don't know who shows up today, but why that matters to me is because if the Chargers show up and the Broncos don't, well, I still got Melvin Gordon out there eating up the PPR points, which is really, really important from the overall safety of a player. And if you're into this type of thing, man, it's, a, it's his old team today. I'm sure he's looking to score. Yeah, so a lot to like about him here. I was wondering what your take would be once I mentioned him to you. And let's just call it what it is. You are not a non-Melvin Gordon fan. You are a Melvin Gordon hater. have been so for years. He's just not your guy. Truther is the word, but yes. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. All kidding aside, he's just in a good spot here, right? 5,600. We always have interest in either one of these running backs when the other guy's out. Gordon's involved in the passing game. He scored twice last week. You got to imagine he's going to have a little bit extra pep in his step going against his old team in his old stadium. And while I don't care that much about it, I do like it that like Denver's out of it. So they're not playing for anything. Why not get your guy involved a little bit? Also, Hunter Henry's out. Keenan yes. Allen is now all but listed as out, which means that I think the Chargers might struggle a little bit more than normal this week, which Same. I think Denver's got an opportunity to win this game. Same. Or at the very least, not fall into a game script where you can't run the football. I think that's the most important part. Whether Denver wins or not is something you would say. We don't care. Okay. We don't think Denver gets rolled here, though. Yeah, exactly. So uh, could be an interesting one. Again, both of these teams can be any given team on any given week or quarter. So I'm not surprised by any outcome right here. But I would, if I like, had to make a bet, I would bet on it being a, a competitive game. Same. All right, next up. So cover boy, a guy that I liked all week, probably more than the masses, was Austin Hooper. And then all of a sudden nobody's there anymore. There's no Odell Beckham. He's been out for a while. Jarvis Landry is the guy I had in my flex spot over Miles Gaskin. Uh, well, I didn't t notice the news until later, and then I decided to go with somebody else besides Miles Gaskin. Landry isn't along, so I liked him in uh, all leagues this week, and now he's not here. Higgins is gone. Even your secondary guys like People Jones aren't around. There are no wide receivers left with the exception of Marvin Hall. And Mr. Bellman already mentioned he has run zero patterns for the Cleveland Browns already. You know who has run patterns? Austin Hooper. He is now the number one target in the passing game for the Cleveland Browns. Time to earn that monster contract that he signed. And if you're looking for a little extra lead in the pencil right here, the Jets are dead last this season against the tight end possession. And they're just overall stinky trash against the passing game, period. And you want to know what? If you want to get a little bit different, I don't hate the ideas of uh, Brian or Najoku in GPPs because I think Hooper does get some love. And I think those guys could also be playing some wide receiver this week. I agree. I think all of them are in play, and I do definitely agree. Uber's going to be chalkier. He just makes too much sense. And this is where you can look at it two ways. I, I mentioned earlier, it's a good thing they're playing the Jets. It's a good thing if you want to use Hooper here, they're playing the Jets. It's not a good thing if you're trying to fade the chalk. It would be a good spot to fade the chalk if the Browns were in a tougher matchup. But they're in such an easy spot, it's hard to see Hooper like failing at 3,500. Now, I get it in tournaments using someone else. There's plenty of tight ends in play today, but – Man, I'm yeah. all, he can catch six for 75, right, and be solid. But if you get a tight end that catches two touchdowns, you're just that's better. Exactly. But to that point, if I had to pick one, you know, especially under 4K tight end to go six for 75, it's easily Hooper. Yeah, he's going to have to be involved today, and it's a really, really good matchup. So he's not bad. Like, he, yeah. we talked about it last year. He had, when he started to develop nice rapport with Matt Ryan, he started to be a really nice producer. Well, now you're starting to see the same thing with Baker Mayfield. Not to the same extent, but he could have a real big game today. He could. He's a, he's a good player. He's not Travis Kelsey. He's not no. Darren Waller. He's not, uh, you know, George Kittle when Kittle's healthy. But yeah. he isn't kind of like that next tier of tight ends of like five, five to ten. You know, he's a good player, and he's in line for a good game today. Uh, I wanted to play him all week, but then the fact he wasn't getting any love, I was like, maybe I'll stick with GPPs with him. Now I'm just looking at him as a cash game lock. It reminds me of Ronald Jones from a couple weeks ago. Uh, and speaking of Waller, man, he was a baller last night. Like, he, he's awesome. 
screw him. He should have scored three times just to try to keep me involved in the Kamara. Uh, Mike Evans fantasy championship. I'm getting my butt kicked in right now. I needed three or four scores from him. And yeah, I get that. Just wasn't enough. Uh, <laughs> yes, I am literally Chef Salty Balls right now, if you can't tell. <laughs> All right, let's check out the uh, QB shootout for the week just to kind of give a little love over to Overlay. Uh, we will start talking NBA a little bit more routinely on Overlay starting next week. It's just been a very busy week. Uh, welcome aboard to all the new customers. Appreciate you guys signing up to play with us for the year. Uh, NBA has been off to a solid start. Let's keep it rolling. But right now we're here to talk football. We got Patrick Mahomes against Atlanta, Aaron Rodgers against Tennessee, a couple of bros and smash spots right here. And I'll tell you why I'm picking Patrick Mahomes today. And I think Rodgers could have a good day. I have a lot more faith in the Tennessee Titans keeping Aaron Rodgers off the field than I do in the Atlanta Falcons keeping the Kansas City Chiefs off the field. Both of these guys are really good. You guys know it. Patrick Mahomes is killing Rodgers in yards. Rodgers is killing him in touchdown passes the two front runners for MVP. But I do think that there is an opportunity in very cold weather here in Green Bay today that Derrick Henry could just keep the minutes turning on the clock and Rodgers just has less time on the field. I think that's the answer right there. Like even if Derrick Henry isn't, doesn't have a great game and that's what you think going, at, going into this game, right? Like Atlanta just will not be able to keep Mahomes off the field and Tennessee might not, might not be able to keep Rodgers off either, but they damn sure have a much better chance. Yeah, exactly. Because these guys are pretty even. They're both in good matchups. Tennessee is a joke on pass defense, so I think Rodgers will do his while he's out there. But like, how much I is mean, he out there? I'll say this: like, I obviously expect both these teams to win the game. But like, if one, like, I would definitely expect Tennessee to win before Atlanta. I'm sure you agree. Oh hell yeah! I I have a bad feeling about tonight's game from a Packers yeah. perspective. Like Green Bay should win tonight, but it's like a four point spread. I mean, Kansas City's favored by like two touchdowns, so. Yeah. Well, if it's if Green Bay gets off to a lot of hot starts, and that's what they're actually known for, Matt Lafleur, his next evolution as a coach is making better in-game adjustments. Like even you saw it last week. Like Carolina, like he got a little out coached in the second half. Like nobody was open. The plays they were calling weren't working. But he starts games really hot. Packers yeah. need to start hot tonight. You Can't always fall said behind. That. You always said that, like, their first drive, like, they always always scoring. And then they – last year, I remember that was a thing. Like, their first drive, they were awesome. And then they really struggled after that in a lot of games. Yeah, and they've gotten better this year, but they're still not great at making in-game adjustments. And now, Fleur's a young coach. He's, like, my age, for Christ's sake. Like, he'll get yeah. better, but that's the evolution. He's a very good coach. Like, obviously better right. than Mike McCarthy, but that's his next evolution as a coach. I'm interested to see the game tonight because I think Green Bay is a better team. But it goes back to – you know, something we always talk about, styles make fights, right? So I'm not sure how the game's going to play out tonight because we've seen Tennessee be able to beat anyone when they play well. Yeah, if they get a lead, like, the Packers' biggest issue is tackling. Well, who's the hardest yeah. person in the world to tackle? Probably Derrick Henry. Exactly. All right, man, next up, Josh, Hanna, Josh Allen versus Ryan Tannehill. Uh, give me Josh Allen. Um, I mean, he's just the better fantasy play most weeks. And I think they have success running the ball tonight. So I think it's more of a Derrick Henry game. So I'll take Josh Allen. I'm with you. I never like going into New England, but Allen's just a better fantasy quarterback. So I'm with you. Yeah, it's not your parents' New England either. Even though he's True. had some rough games against New England, New England's pretty well cooked at this point. True. All right. Deshaun Watson versus Lamar Jackson. Um, well, I'm rooting for Lamar Jackson because I got him playing in a fantasy championship because I need the upside. But truthfully, I'll take Deshaun Watson because, well, let's just call this one in a very simplistic form. Lamar is a, probably a slightly better DFS quarterback, but it, it could be even. And the New York Giants defense is good, and since he's isn't. It's funny. I agree with that because Lamar runs more than Watson, and running is just rewarded more than passing. Yeah. So Watson's did, a better real-life quarterback. Yeah. Watson's another one of these guys, kind of like Rodgers, although even more so. Like, he can run. He just doesn't run a lot, even more so than Rodgers. Rodgers is like that. But Watson's really like that, where he can run. He just doesn't run a ton. I agree with your assessment, though. Give me Watson here just because a lot more faith in the Giants' defense than the Bengals' defense. I mean, the Giants are also in a must-win game today. Yep. And their defense is really good. All right, next up, Justin Herbert versus Jalen Hurts. Well, this is my favorite one on the board. Give me Jalen Hurts. Justin Herbert has no Keenan Allen today and no Hunter Henry. And while he's good enough to get it done with other players, uh, Jalen Hurts, more running, uh, more motivation to win. Weaker defense that they're going up against. I'll take Jalen Hurts. Dead. Uh, Russ Wilson against the Rams. Matt Ryan against Kansas City. Give me Matt Ryan. I'll take Matt Ryan also, but tough one for me. You want to know why, guys? 
Because junk time points, they account. It's true. They do. It's true. All right. Jared Goff at Seattle. Ben Roethlisberger against the Colts. Ugh. Um, oof. I won't pick this one, but give me a big bad. I like this one more than you do. I like Goff here. I'm with you. That big Ben looks cooked. Goff isn't anything special either, but I think he has a decent day today, enough to beat Ben. Uh, I think this game ends 3-0. to zero. No, I expect a defensive battle in that game. I don't really like either of these guys. This is probably the last one I would actually pick, though. That's fair. Um, because I don't have any. I picked Big Ben, but I can't really argue with you. Right. All right. Um, Andy Dalton against Philly. Drew Locke against the Chargers. Oof. Give me Drew Locke. Same, and I'm not exactly sure why. Uh, fair, because I'm with you. All right, Philip Rivers versus Gardner Minshew. This one won't count because Minshew's a backup. So go Philip Rivers. Minshew's backing up today. Pretty sure. I thought I saw yesterday that they're going with Glennon again today. I did not know that. I would not. I would really struggle to pick Rivers over anyone today. I saw he like. I saw he put cornrows in his hair. So I, maybe he got benched for that. Could be. Mike Glenn is starting for the Jaguars on Sunday, yeah. I think it gives them a better chance, to be honest. I mean, I don't think they're going to win either way. Agreed. The Jaguars seem to be smarter than the Jets. Oh, Robinson, you're a little banged up. Oh, you can't play today. Mike Glennon, you're the starter. Let's, uh, you know, I won't be surprised if DJ Shark turns his ankle. No. <laughs> All right, Trubisky versus Bridgewater. Give me Trubisky. This one's an easy one, Trubisky. Just the running upside alone. Yeah, I mean, honestly, if it's for me, Trubisky... In a must-win game against Jacksonville, Bridgewater against a really tough defense, Jalen Hurts against Herbert. Like, those are my first two. And then after that, it gets a lot harder, in my opinion. I get that. Uh, you seem to like golf more than I do. We're pretty torn right here. It's a tough. I like these two a lot, though. And then after that, the decision becomes much more difficult. It's a tough one, for sure. All right, guys. Good luck today. Go win that money. Good luck in your fantasy championships. Hopefully, you're not playing Alvin Kamara. And uh, let's get after it. Thanks, guys.